I'm Dan Winston. I'm the founder and CEO of Zetify. We are working to solve connectivity problems for farms around Australia and soon around the world. We've uh, we've been working on this on this challenge for the last four years, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the background of of the business and how we've gotten to the point where we're at now, and also going to talk a little bit about um, yeah the technology and and how the food agility project is allowing us to to build new technology that solves this very important problem for farmers. So our company uh, started. In 20, well, 2017, it was an idea that I was working on, but it was 2018 that things started to sort of pick up a bit of pace after noting that, that the farmer shown on the top left there, a bloke named Andrew Seville, based out in Durham Bandy, um, had built his own 53 metre tower on his property. And um, in stumbling upon that article, it, it really got my interest. And I, I was wondering what would drive anyone to, to weld up in eight metre sections, a, a, a absolutely massive tower that would dwarf many of those that Telstra build. Um, you can only see three of the eight metre sections there in the photo on the left. But yeah, there, there's many more of them going up to a full height of 53 metres. And there's some good videos online of that tower being erected, pulled up by a tractor. Um, after talking to Andrew about what he'd done and why, I, I sort of, I guess I got some insights into just how big a problem it was on farms across Australia not having enough connectivity out in their fields. And um, yeah, some more research sort of showed that that was a global global problem. Uh, so the, the two sort of things, the yeah, the, the actually Dave, the report that, that you wrote, the precision to, or the, that you largely authored, the precision to decision agriculture was one of the first reports that I sort of re re relied upon to, to get some hard numbers around just how bad it is out there. And uh, Syro, of course, have done a lot of work in that space as well. But most people are agreeing that around two thirds to, to four fifths of, of farms have inadequate connectivity out in the fields. Um, knowing that most farmers aren't going to go to the lengths that Andrew did, I started to explore options for how this could be solved. So my background, I'm a, a wireless network engineer. And um, I am based in Wagga Wagga and, and continue to be based in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales. So I have good proximity to, to farming country, but I'm not off the farm myself. So made use of the opportunity to really get out there, talk to a lot of farmers at the Henty Field Days to see if they would spend money to solve this problem, if there was a solution available. And it was a resounding yes, that they certainly would. We've had a lot of support uh, in the early part of the business from people that knew that I was really just figuring out how could this problem be, uh, be approached. And um, yeah, the, the farmers were very willing to, to work with us, even though the technology still had a long way to go. Now, we, we've also had a lot of support from government and industry. And um, it's worth mentioning that, yeah, in particular, the, the Chief Scientist Office in New South Wales has got behind Zetify in a big way with some grants that have allowed us to progress the, this technology. Uh, the Commonwealth Government, through the Accelerating Commercialization Program as well, have, have given us funding that have allowed us to, to build out this tech. We are very fortunate as a startup to be operating on a problem that is of significant importance to the nation, and that's recognised by our governments and by industry as well. And we've had a lot of help in, in getting to this point. Um, the food agility work that we've been doing, you can see some of uh, on the top right there. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Global Digital Farm has allowed us to sort of yeah, develop our technology to the point where, where we're actually now ready to take it to market at scale. So I, I, I'm going to jump around a little bit because I want to tell you a bit about our technology and what we're building and how the food agility projects allowed us to, to further develop that. Then I'll come back and talk about what that means for industry and, and the next steps. So... Wi-Fi is not new. Wi-Fi has obviously been around uh, for, for many, many years. And um, Australia's had a big part in, in developing the Wi-Fi technology that allows us to all connect in our homes. But there's some challenges that, uh, that are unique to making it work in rural and remote areas and to making connectivity uh, scalable in rural and remote areas, particularly on farms. Zetify has come up with some new technologies that allow us to do things with Wi-Fi that you just otherwise couldn't. Uh, the first of these is Zetilink. This is our RF technology that allows us to create a longer range network than would otherwise be possible. We essentially are using the fact that a vehicle or a machine not, can be told where it is using a GPS, and, and then we can use IoT, machine learning, and, and a lot of uh, smart cloud infrastructure to provide information back to that machine to configure its radio frequency front end to beam steer an antenna towards the best possible tower and the best uplink. 
And that, that foundational insight is what has allowed Zetify to build antenna systems and RF front end systems that outperform anything else on the market. So we're working with the UTS radio frequency technology team to implement antenna systems for tractors, for cars, for trucks, for utes um, that can basically outperform any of the, the big antennas that you would otherwise have to have on your bull bar. Um, so we can make them smaller, we can make them higher performance, longer range, uh, better throughput, lower latency. Now, right now, that's being used by our customers uh, with prototype devices just to make phone calls so that they can, yeah, run their business. They're using it so they can uh, yeah, access cloud software, so they can send emails. But increasingly, there's, there's demands for this connectivity to enable autonomy. Now, the second technology that we're, we're developing and that we've been awarded a US patent around is our sleepy network technology. This allows us to use an in-band signal to wake up a Wi-Fi repeater when a vehicle's within range. And that means we can have like at one tower that can have a very small solar panel, small battery located in the paddock, and it, it wakes up on demand to provide that connectivity when the vehicle needs it and goes back to sleep when it's not needed. So th this, this insight and this technology allows us to, to really come up with something that can work on the properties of the size uh, and, and scale that we have here in Australia. And by keeping that infrastructure cost down, we can, we can truly make use of some of these new technologies like uh, Starlink, for example, which is great for connecting your, your shed or your house, but you probably don't want to have a Starlink dish located on every vehicle or every gatepost. It's just that the cost doesn't really work out that way. It's better to have yeah, one or two backhaul links and then um, spread that out across your property, depending on where you need that connectivity. So that's our, our second part of the technology. The third one um, is more about how we've implemented it. Um, obviously, there aren't many network engineers out in the back of Burke or in Condoblin or any of the other places where Zetify is needed. Um, yeah, so we've we've developed our technology to enable it to be very scalable, very easy to install and um, all managed centrally from the cloud by us. The devices just have to be plugged in by a farmer and, and we, we've approached this problem from the start as something that's got to be fit for purpose for farmers rather than making it something that's uh, built for enterprise, which is the more common technology that you would see uh, yeah, in these areas. So uh, our team at Zetify has grown over the past, um, yeah, over the past four years from just me uh, to now a team of 20 people. 15 of those people are working in Wagga Wagga, New South Wales, and the rest are spread out around the country with one young Joseph in New York. Um, there's a bit of a story behind that one uh, to do with Cornell University that we can go into another time. And um, excitingly, we are now actually recruiting um, more people. So yeah, big part of the reason that I say yes to these sorts of opportunities is to push my own agenda, as you know, Dave. Um, Zetify is in actively recruiting right now. So if anyone that's uh, watching this webinar can um, put us in touch with software engineers or um, data scientists, we are looking for people. Uh, most roles are available to be filled either in Melbourne or in Wagga Wagga with a preference for Wagga Wagga, we, where, where possible, we really like to keep people in the bush because we are really all about getting farmers connected and the people that are living in Wagga, we can get them out on farms and keep them close to that customer base, which is really valuable for us. Um, so yeah, that's that's my pitch around what we would like out of uh, anyone who's watching, if you've got um, some contacts for us. And um, yeah, that's some information on our technology and, and the work that Food Agility is allowing us to do. So yeah, the, the amazing team at UTS have been developing custom antenna systems and custom uh, electronics that allow us to really push the boundaries of just how far you can send a signal across a farm. I'd be very happy to take any questions. Thanks, Dan. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's um you're you're right on the tip of the wave here. So a couple of questions come in. One, well, what one was a comment from me, right? Gosh, horror! What are the rural science ag students going to put on their youths in ten years' time if they can't swing whopping great fat sticks and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera? That's that's a real credibility issue. That's a comment from me, having just furnished <laughs> my two boys with stuff to fatten up their youths with. Um, sleepy network. Have you got a bit of an idea of the sort of the density coverage optimization? Numbers that you're going to need. I mean, you're talking about some major infrastructure deployments, aren't you? 
Well, using 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi, which is what we've been using until now, we can get out to 500 meters pretty reliably to a phone handset or out to a couple of kilometers to a, to a vehicle uh, using existing technology. And, and we're looking to sort of double that using the technology that's being built by, U, by UTS. However, there's still a fundamental limit to how far you can push a, a 2.4 gigahertz signal. It, um, it, it basically, it gets absorbed by water, which is why your microwave oven works so well. Unfortunately, that same effect reduces the range of the signals that we need to send when there's trees in the way. Now, interestingly, if I seemed out of breath when I started this talk, it's because I um, just got out of an Uber um, from visiting the guys over at Morse Micro. Um, so I'm in Sydney today. And uh, Morse Micro are an Aussie company doing some amazing things. And I see huge potential for what could be done with their technology within agriculture. So we've, we've tweaked the scope of the, uh, of the food agility project to include their technology. Um, it runs on 900 megahertz. So as when compared to 2.4 gigahertz, which is uh, 2,400 megahertz, this is, it's a lower, lower frequency. It goes through trees and, it, and it, the signal propagates over distances far more effectively. There's a trade-off. It's not as fast, but we don't need this to be lightning fast on farmers for farmers. Farmers don't need ultra HD Netflix in their tractors. They'd be quite happy with standard definition Netflix, I'm sure. Um, and, and we can do that using Halo. Uh, in addition to Netflix, you can use it for things like yeah, video cameras around the farm, for, of course, for Wi-Fi calling, for SMS, for email, for light web browsing. We see this as technology that can fundamentally yeah, really change the capabilities of our offering. And it's only just coming to market uh, now, which is very, very exciting. They've been working on it for a long time. Um, they're a startup, but they're also the Southern Hemisphere's largest fab or semiconductor company. They've just raised, I think it's $150 million to bring this to market. And um, yeah, it's gonna be absolutely huge. We're, we're looking to have that integrated into our tech very soon. So, right. so just just following the halo lead, and I know it's not so, I know it's something you've got your eye on closely, but so so nine hundred megahertz, right? Typically, small bit long, like we're talking at ten kilometers order of magnitude. So, but halo, in order to offer that Wi-Fi sort of characteristics, even though it's not full Wi-Fi, but it's pretty damn close. There, what's the penalty? What's the trade-off between that preserving the band or, or reaching the bandwidth, but costing the distance? So. What, what sort of practical transmission distances are we talking about for halo type stuff? Well, that's, that's what we're discovering through, the, through this project. And um, yeah, we, we, it's not just about the overall distance. It's about um, the distance through trees, which is one of the limitations of the technology that we're working with right now, that 2.4 gigahertz just, yeah, essentially you need line of sight for it to work reliably, which is fine in many open cropping sort of, uh, yeah, the wide, wide scale cropping enterprises. But if we want to move into those other agricultural verticals, um, yeah, being able to make it work uh, in a yeah a, a nut farm or a um, yeah, an, an orchard or anywhere where you've got non line of sight or near line of sight challenges, um, we're, we're hoping multiple kilometres um, is scalable. Like it's, it's like, even if we can only achieve three kilometres reliably, um, if you can do it at a low enough cost, it's it, it's a pretty easy model to deploy where you've got every gate post hooked up now we're probably not talking about a solution here for, for cattle stations but for for the average Australian farm it's a, it would be a very low cost scalable way to have that infield connectivity needed um, for, for everyday applications including video which you can't do with most of the IOT tech that's out there today. No, absolutely. Um, a couple of questions. First of all, a comment. Darren Yates is just down the road from you. I think he'll be tapping on the door. He loves the tech. Thanks, Darren. Um, question from someone here. Um, how close will a vehicle need to be to activate the wake up in a, in a sleepy network node? Are we talking hundreds of metres, kilometre? What sort of distance are we talking about? It's, it's essentially um, like 20 or 30% more than the usable distance. So if you're talking about halo, then yeah, five kilometers would be a, a, an easy wake up. Um, with normal Wi-Fi, three kilometers is fine. Oh, that's impressive, that's sensitive. And, um, and in terms of, give, give us a bit of a mental picture. How, how big are these nodes likely to be? So they're gonna be solar powered, obviously store a battery on board or something like that. So they work at night, but how physically, what are we talking about? So right now, the initial prototypes, we've put a, a big solar panel on just to make sure we don't have the hassle of, of having to um, yeah, put, yeah, to swap things out or, or while we're figuring out the, the mathematics behind when to sleep it, when to wake it up. 
But our goal is to drive the individual node cost down to the hundreds of dollars price point. So that's a no brainer for farmers to just roll out dozens of these if they need them. And um, yeah, the, the to make that possible, we need to get it down to probably a 40 watt panel, which costs about 40 bucks, um, a small battery that would be something similar to what you'd see in a motorbike ideally. And then an antenna that can be mounted on a, a, a low cost piece of infrastructure. So the power pole project that we're doing with the support of the New South Wales government is a good example of what we try to achieve. And that's not overbuilding any existing infrastructure wherever possible. So we use the silos, we use the sheds. If there's power poles, use those. Um, if there's not, then keeping it down to six metres, as much as I admire Andrew Seville's 53 metre tower, it's just, it's not easy to pop those out everywhere you'd like to. If we, we sort of go the other way and have lots of small bits of infrastructure, have them all meshed together so that you can have connectivity everywhere on demand, we think that's the, the way to scale this. Yeah. And uh, on the most quick, there's a question here in relation to scaling. Maybe they've seen a court with you in Canada, but globally, where are you going to focus next? There's a big Australia build out here. Um, yeah. Where else are you likely to be popping up? So, yeah, the pilot we're doing in Canada um, has shown that it's a very similar challenge to what we're faced with here in Australia. Um, like from an agricultural systems point of view, they're not that dissimilar. Um, from a yeah, topography point of view, in many situations uh, in, out in the prairies there, very similar to what we're dealing with here. So I think Canada's a, a big opportunity. Then, of course, there's the United States. So um, in surveying New York state farmers, around 50% of those farmers need better coverage, which was a real surprise to us, to be honest. We, um, yeah, When we looked at this Grow New York competition run by Cornell University, initially we thought it wouldn't be a good fit because we're solving connectivity. You're in New York. What would you need us for? But it turns out that it is one of their biggest challenges as well. Uh, essentially, once your population density drops off, there's just no real commercial reason for the mobile network operators to deploy the towers. It's just too expensive. Uh, we need something that's lower cost than LTE and Wi-Fi is fast enough to really make that yeah, usable. We're not claiming that's as good as 5G. It's not like it's it's not, you're not going to have this sort of connecting your cities, but once you reach the edge of those 4G or 5G networks and you need to extend it or make it more reliable, that's where our technology's got a, a real role to play by extending that range and uh, filling in the gaps. Awesome. And look, I've got a question from someone who I know for a fact is overseas. Sarantha, great to hear from you. Great to see you online. Um, can the Zeti rover work independently without a Zeti cell or does a rover need to connect and work within the Zeti cell framework? Yeah, so the first version we built was to work just with Zeti cells. And then we realized that we were sort of going against our own principles in that you're overbuilding Telstra infrastructure and Optus infrastructure. And that's crazy to do that. Like most Aussie farms, at least, don't have no coverage. They've just got poor coverage. It's, it's almost there. You can get a text message out. You can sometimes get a voice call out if you're standing in the right direction. Um, by, by building a system that takes advantage of that small amount of coverage, it means we don't have to cover the whole farm in Wi-Fi unless the farmer wants local communications for cameras or other things like that. If they're just trying to use it on the go in the tractor or, or when they're out and about working, then we can actually yeah, provide connectivity where it's needed by leveraging the Telstra network primarily, uh, but also Optus to fill in some gaps where needed. And then, um, yeah, make that work. If there's still additional gaps, yeah, private Wi-Fi networks can, can fill those in. Brilliant. We've exhausted the list of, oh, hang on. There's another question. Could this be aimed at other markets as well, not just farms? I'm thinking about the many national parks across Australia with pretty ordinary coverage for safety. So that's the one that just popped in. That's a great question. And absolutely. Um, yeah, there, there are opportunities. But the thing that made us go to agriculture first was that the demand was so, so clear. Um, there's a need from a safety and a productivity point of view. There's Farmers are innovative and are willing to try something that's new. And there's a budget constraint that's not there when you talk about, say, the mining and the, the resources sector. They've got the same problem. They can just throw cash at it to some extent, which means they can solve it using a private mobile phone network, private LTE. Um, farmers aren't typically willing to invest the hundred or two hundred thousand uh, dollars to solve this problem, but if they can do it for five or ten thousand dollars, then that's that that's something they want to look at. So that's why we started with agriculture. But yeah, the project that we are doing with the New South Wales Telco Authority right now under that SBIR um, program, again with some support from UTS, which is great. 
Um, yeah, that, that project will see us doing some roadside rest stops, some national parks, some beaches, other places with a sleepy Wi-Fi repeater that'll be a public hotspot. So, yeah, when you're going to a beach or a, a roadside rest stop on a highway that doesn't have adequate connectivity, we want to demonstrate that this technology can provide some Wi-Fi there, which lets you get a call out in an emergency or just to take a photo and upload it on, on Instagram. 